So this is the new GHS label generator that can be found at iws.colin.edu slash mgarcia slash GHS. And I want to walk you through generation of labels and the printing of labels. So there's a lot of information here on the page. And we're going to start here with the actual concentration amount and the units. So if you have some particular solution that you're making and it has a particular concentration or molarity or percentage, then you'll go ahead and fill in whatever that information is here. So let's go ahead and do as an as an example, one molar hydrochloric acid. Now, if for some reason you don't have uh, a molarity or a percentage or a concentration or whatever it may be, then you can either leave this to where it says units like it initially does, or you can just choose NA. Both will accomplish the same thing and leave this field here blank. And then that way the information will not be populated at the top of the page. So this is going to be hydrochloric acid. For my molecular formula, I'll do HCl. Um, it's very important this is case sensitive, so you want to make sure that you put uppercase and lowercase appropriately. And then for initials of generator, this can be either lowercase or uppercase. Put today's date. Change that. There we go. All right. So I've got that, and if I want to just take a peek at my label currently, it looks like this. Now let's say I want to change up the color here and go ahead and change the background. So you always click update when you want to make updates to what your label looks like. So if I want to give it black lettering there for the top of the label, I can. All right, so that's looking pretty good, but as we know, hydrochloric acid is highly corrosive um, and of course has uh, that as one of its pictograms. So if I want to put in danger and corrosive, then I can go ahead and click both of those, hit update, and it's going to add in danger and show the corrosive pictogram. So this is a pretty good label and I believe currently, assuming that these are all, this is the only pictogram that comes with hydrochloric acid, this provides us with all of the information that we would be required to provide via OSHA's uh, regulations. Now, if you scroll down here on the left-hand side, you'll also notice that I ask if there is an NFPA safety diamond present on the safety data sheet. We can only populate the NFPA safety diamond if it is present on the SDS sheet. We can't go off of whatever they put with the GHS labels for the safety data, uh, data sheet. So it has to have the diamond with the numbers filled in. So if there is no diamond, you can simply click no or not even interact with this. Either way, if you click no, you'll notice nothing's happening. It's not happening where you can see it, but it's essentially saying don't put a diamond here. Okay? So you don't have to engage with this if you don't want to if there's no diamond. Um, but if there is a diamond, then you'll click yes. Now that's going to automatically add in a diamond. And when you scroll down, you're going to see that you now have the options of choosing a health rating, a flammability rating, a reactivity rating, as well as classifying a specific hazard. Let me go ahead and update this so that there's no specific hazard shown. Okay. Now let's say that um, there is a zero reactivity rating for hydrochloric acid, a zero flammability, but as far as health goes, let's give it a two. Okay. Then I want to update. It updates the diamond, and if I want to put in a specific hazard, for instance acid, then I can go ahead and add that in. So there we go. That gives me my health safety diamond. So assuming that this is what we saw on the SDS sheet, this label is essentially ready to go. So when I want to print this label, I'm going to first add it to my print preview so I can kind of see what it's going to look like. So I'm going to do that now. So all you have to do is click this plus button over here on the right hand side. And when I ask you for how many you want, you just say uh, in this case, I'll say three, and I'll click Add, and it adds three right here to my print preview. Now, let's say that in addition to hydrochloric acid, I decide that I also want to make a 1% glucose solution, like that. Okay, so the molecular formula is C6H12O6. Everything else is correct, except glucose has no uh, hazard warnings, and it has no diamond. So I can click that, and then when I update here, 
I have glucose with all of that information. Now let's say that I don't want my hydrochloric acid and my glucose to have the exact same look. So I'm going to go ahead and update the uh, layout here. Let's give glu uh, glucose a uh, green label. And we'll go ahead and do white lettering. All right, so I'm going to update that. Then I'll add in three more of these. And there we go. So that's what my print preview currently looks like for my label sheet. And I can add more if I want to. If I want to add another six for glucose, I can go ahead and add six more. And there we go. And then to print, all I have to do is click print in the upper right hand corner here. It's going to populate this page. Now it's really important when you go to print from a browser that you choose to print backgrounds and images. If you don't, if you don't choose to print these in color, your backgrounds are going to be gone here. So the green and the blue, completely gone. And your labels are all just going to be white. So in whatever browser you have, you need to make sure that when you go to print, you set it to print background images and colors. Um, and if you need assistance with this, just let me know and I can get you set up. Now right now, we have it in portrait orientation, and you can see these labels are a certain size. These actually, while they might not look like it here, are going to be small enough to where you can place them on a dropper bottle. So that's really convenient for you. But if you want to increase the size, simply choose landscape mode, and now you're going to wind up with much larger labels that are going to be able to fit onto larger bottles with easier to read text. Now it is worth noting that when I do portrait, I only have one page shown here, but when I do landscape, it does add a blank page. So just be mindful of that when you go to print. It should only add one blank page, but if you don't want it to print, then just go to the second to last number of pages. So in this case, I could just do from one to one, and it would only print my page with the labels. Okay, so I can print if I want to. I'm not going to because this is just an example. And then if I'm done doing everything I need to, if I've made all the labels I, I need to make for the time being, or if for some reason I just want to reset everything here so I'm not printing these labels, all you have to do is click reset, and it's going to reset all of your information, and you're free to start over again generating whatever labels you want to generate. So that is essentially how you use the GHS label generator. I highly recommend using this with Chrome, Firefox, or Safari. I wouldn't use it with Internet Explorer as Internet Explorer definitely has difficulties working with JavaScript and a lot of the functionality I've built into this page requires heavy amounts of JavaScript. So again, definitely utilize Firefox, Chrome, or Safari. Uh, if you do use Opera, Opera will also work with this. Alright, that's it.